So Michael Pittman was one of the guys that was projected to be a, a free agent. He is not going to make it to free agency as the Colts are putting a free agent tag on Pittman, which means he's going to make uh, $21.816 million a year uh, at a minimum. They'll still try to get a long-term deal done with him. Uh, cost of wide receivers is going up. Here are uh, some free agents that are available. Um, you got Marquise Brown, Calvin Ridley, uh, Gabe Davis, Darnell Mooney, Marquez Valdez, Scantling. All right, we, we kind of previewed what we were doing. These are guys that could potentially be cap casualties as well. So they'd be available if they get cut or trade potential. Uh, Lockett, Williams, Gallup, Lazard, Michael Thomas. Do any of those guys pique your interest um, as far as, you know, trying to get that number two to complement Amari Cooper for the Browns? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Andrew Barry has shown the trade is your best bet to ensure that you acquire a player. I mean, Amari Cooper, you gave up a fifth round pick for your number one receiver. Sure, you had to pay him 20 some million, but with the way you've had Jack Duffin on, the way they, they do business here, the contracts and, and the cash that Jimmy Haslam puts out up front. That hasn't been a problem. And so if you can get one of those guys, now I know Mike Williams has been injury prone, but my goodness, you know, he was Deshaun Watson's favorite receiver when they were together at Clemson. And, you know, they he could be lightning in a bottle. In a trade, you assure you get him, and you redo the contract and the trade like you did with Cooper. You traded for Elijah Moore last year. That was the highest pick you had, your second-round pick. So, to me, you get into a bidding war in free agency. It always ends up this way. Mike Evans, tagged, not a free agent or he signed. Michael Pittman, you go down the list, they don't let them get away, and that puts everybody else's value higher and higher. And you go put all your chips in a basket with a free agent, all you do is kind of bid and drive the price up. Same way with T. Higgins. A lot of people thought, oh, he's going to be available. Those guys don't make it to free agency. So guys that are going to get cut because the team's getting, they're, they're way over the cap and they really are rebuilding, to me makes so much more sense. you know. And I don't know who they feel would be that guy. But a Mike Williams, you know, the guys at Tyler Lockett, DeAndre Hopkins, you know, guys like that that are available make more sense because you could probably get them for a fifth, sixth, seventh round pick, and then all you got to do is deal with the salary. And and Andrew Barry's been pretty good at that. So I really think that's the direction they would go as opposed to free agency. If you get end up can't doing that and you go to free agency – on that list, maybe a Gabe Davis, um, depending. I don't know if the other guy, Marquise Brown, he's been around. Calvin Ridley, I mean, uh, Darnell Mooney, I don't know if they're more like an Elijah Moore type player. Um, it just seems like a big uh, receiver like a Gabe Davis or, or, like I said earlier, in a trade. Maybe they don't like a Mike Williams or just are scared away from the thing. But there are options when you go that route that you can make sure you got the guy. 